All right, let's do this. Yeah, I... Hi, Nate. You're here in my kitchen right now. That I am. People can't see it because we're not doing video anymore in this. We're going to try to make it, you know, podcasty, podcasty. Not like a couple of bros on TikTok podcasty. Uh, <laughs> but welcome to the first episode of The Quest Within. This is the rebrand of the Music and Mental Health Podcast uh, that was driven by Nathan here, my amazing partner. And we're really excited to move forward. The new direction of the podcast is going to be definitely still mental health focused, but we're going to be talking about topics sort of even outside of that as well. I feel like we can relate pretty much anything we want to mental health these days, uh, but they're not going to be, you know, psychosomatic topics all the time, right? With with that said, um, without further ado, welcome to The Quest Within. Roll the intro. This is The Quest Within. So, Nate, for the first time, we're recording in person, which I feel like is amazing. And strangely weird for how many we've done. I know, right? Yeah, like we've been doing this for, what, two years now? And <laughs> it's the, the good old Zoom days. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, to start out the new rebranding of the podcast, The Quest Within. Well, okay, first off, let's talk a little bit about the name. So, as, as you know, I'm, hi, I'm Theology. Uh, I make club ready video game remixes and also nerdy mental health content. And I figured in brainstorming for this, that the name, the quest within sort of did sound nerdy, right? But it's like the journey you're taking within, within your mind, within yourself. And it's really, uh, just exploring that idea, no matter what topic we're going to cover, it'll always sort of be on self-improvement and betterment. And I'm really excited about it because uh, with the Music and Mental Health podcast, we sort of pigeonholed ourselves into only talking about certain things. And now I feel like we can get away with a whole wider array of topics like we were discussing earlier today when we were at Longfellow Grill, the restaurant that we met at. Where it all began. Mm Mm-hmm. All those years ago. Yeah, it's crazy. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Nathan (laughs) was my chef a while ago, or he could say that I was his server. I don't know. Let's go with that. Yeah. I like that that better. (laughs) Yeah, chef. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. And that's how we met. And so today we, you know, we've had the whole day planned to hang out because he's in town right now. Uh, Normally Nathan lives in Seattle. I live in Minneapolis and we are, we were really excited to get together. I picked him up at 10 ish, 10 20. I was a little late. (laughs) And uh, he was like, yeah, let's go get some coffee. And I was like, yeah, cool. But I'm also hungry. Do you want to get some brunch? And so we decided to go back to Longfellow Grill for a quick little reminiscing of the past. And uh, while we were eating, uh, Nathan, you want to talk a little bit about the uh, whole reflections that we had there? Yeah, it's, you know, it's Christmas time right now. Everything's slowing down. And as things slow down, it gives a opportunity for reflection on the year what's happened and for me it it feels like it's gone by so fast really though it has um and one thing i appreciate about being able to see long-standing friends is you get a moment of reflection over time and that's something that i've been kind of really thinking about like where was i and what kind of person was i at that point in time when it began and how have we changed evolved and got better over time because i mean we both have significantly you know i i do like to say that longfellow grill that was like a very pivotal moment in my life that really 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 changed me um because it was sort of one of the first times in my life where i was really branching out on my own i had always worked jobs with my brother And this was one of the first ones I had where it was sort of like, okay, I'm taking a step for myself now. And the people I met there and the experiences I had with uh, the staff while working there over those five years were unforgettable. For us, it really solidified when we went to Above and Beyond Acoustic in Chicago. I remember you were going through something pretty bad in your life at that time as well, if you want to talk about that. Yeah, I mean, when I got the job at Longfellow, that was 
three months after my father had passed away and getting out of a very bad relationship which happened I got out of that two days before my father passed yeah. and then I lost my executive chef job of a restaurant I opened because they couldn't afford to pay me so I came back to Minneapolis after a month in England after my father died to just nothing and that was my first job and kind of a very weird phase in my life um, but you know when I think about it something we discussed earlier is like the branches of life there are smaller branches you wake up in the morning you make tea you make coffee right mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things small branch right like if i had coffee my day isn't going to be different or my life even i mean five years you might be now. a little more jacked up <laughs> yeah <but>. <laughs> true <laughs> that but it's probably a smaller thing right it's a smaller decision to make but there are larger branches right getting out of a relationship someone passing moving to a different country right these are big decisions that start a whole new pathway of meeting people and you know evolving growing and being reflective yeah so those are the large branches right well i even think of like you may have heard some doggy footsteps in the background there just now uh because my dog is roaming the house currently but even getting her was huge um my wife had a bad day at work one day and, well, she had had several. <laughs> it was a, it was a really bad time in that in that job, um, because she's an equine vet. I may have said that on the M music and mental health podcast a few times, and there was a uh, basically an epidemic in within all the horses that she had to contain basically by herself. And uh, she put our names on the list for a golden retriever, and then we got kicked out of our condo. The HOA kicked us out in Kentucky, so we had to sell it, and then we. I don't know. Just a lot of things happen, but Louise is the catalyst for me having moved back to Minnesota. Um, that's how I always think of it. And I'd have it no other way. Mm -hmm. Like, despite the fact that, you know, like my life is like four times more expensive now because, you know, we're living here again and we don't have that cheap 2% interest rate on that condo anymore, which by the way, finance is something we're definitely going to be discussing here in the future. Um, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way because I'm back here. I'm doing things that I want to be doing every day. And so what if there's like a little upward struggle, like it's, it's all worth it, you know? So, I mean, that, that goes into one of the reflexive pieces I've been having as I speak to very old friends, I've noticed a quality in everyone that I consider a very close friend mm -hmm. is this quality of resilience. Yeah. And it's something we were kind of thinking about more today. Like, what is resilience? What does that look like? It's something that comes with time. It's not something that you are inherently, you have, right? It's something mm -hmm. that grows over life. Yeah. I feel like a lot of like heroes in movies and video games just have it, but like right. then you go into their backstory and it's like all these things happened, right? So. Yeah, exactly. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, but... Are you good, brother? Yeah. No, I mean, but what what kind of qualities do you think are components of resilience um, in your world? That's a good question. Um, I don't know, maybe like emotional regulation could be one. Mm. You think so? Yeah. I mean, what, what do we really have control over? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, there is that prayer of serenity, right? The like, help me to, uh, what, how does it go again? You're asking the wrong grant person. Me the, grant me the strength <laughs> to cope with the things that mm. I like can't control. Um, and then for the things I can control, mm -hmm. it's basically a mantra of just like, let it be if you can't control it, but if you can like take action, which I feel like is a good balance to have in life. Yeah. I mean, the only thing we can really control is how we react to things. True. Truly. Um, that's part of emotional regulation and time and how we respond to things that happen to us mm -hmm. in that way. Yeah. Instead of feeling like everything's happening to me, it's like, no, this is just life that is happening right. around that i am part of it because i'm being in the world yeah exactly and like it's inevitable honestly there's definitely times in my life where people have been talking to me with that kind of an attitude you know or or the attitude of like oh a lot of good things happened to me now something bad is gonna happen right because, yeah it's that whole like mindset of i don't i don't necessarily want to call it a victim mentality because i feel like that's True. a little harsh i don't feel like that accurately describes it um, what would be better to say there? It's a little bit of ego, I think. Yeah. Expand on that. What do you, what do you mean? So it's a little egotistical to think that 
everything going wrong in your life, like it's happening to you. Because for the most part, most people don't do things intentionally to other people. Yeah. Right. They don't care enough to spend that much energy. Right. So not everything is happening to you. The stock market doesn't change because of you, sure. right? Maybe you make a small influence by buying something, but yeah. just because the stocks go down doesn't mean it has anything to do with you. But right. it's happening to you yes, as well. Exactly. Right. So like I'm the mainline water pipe burst in my house four months ago. Came back from a work trip and it was just living out hotels for a month and a half. I was traveling, like it was like a big disruptor. Mm-hmm. It's like no one burst the water pipe, but you just deal with what's put in front of you. Yeah, exactly. And at the end of the day, like it wasn't even that bad, right? You know? oh, it wasn't great. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't great. But, you know, life events happen, uncertainty. It's not something you can really run away from yeah, or avoid yeah, yeah. completely. Right. But when things do come along, resilience is having the tools, being adaptable, like having a support system, mm-hmm. right? Having a good social support system. Right. Um, and the ability to see both sides. Like for me personally, I see negative and I see positive, mm-hmm. right? Because it's easy to see all the negative. It's right. harder to see the positive on it. But for most situations, there's always some type of lesson or outcome that I can take from it. Yeah. So recognize that, yeah, this is kind of shitty right now. But over the time, I'm going to learn something from it and yeah. be better for it. Totally, yeah. It's that yin and yang. It's that take the good with the bad balance right like i preach that so much in a lot of the content and art that i make is that balance is so 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 important because yeah there's so much you can't control in life but if you take it as it comes like it could turn into a major positive right Mm -hmm. like again i'm going to use getting louise as an example i never thought that that would turn into us moving back to minnesota but my goodness what a positive Mm -hmm. you know i'm back with people that I know and love and familiar places and I'm like regularly DJing now whereas you know it was a gig maybe once a month before and now it's like I don't know really busy so that feels really good right Mm -hmm. just just that whole aspect of uh, resilience is so powerful what other examples Nate um, have you either seen in your life or seen other people go through that are good examples. I mean, I guess in, in my, my life, there's been a lot of struggle Mm -hmm. and, you know, viewing the struggle mindset as negative for the most part, but I will say through the struggle mindset, definitely developed a lot of resilience because I tended to put myself in the harder situations mm-hmm. than most people would. Sure. Um, yeah. Because I, I, I focus always... so much on growth. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. When growth is happening, it's usually harder. Yes. Um, I remember you being like, I'm comfortable. This isn't okay. <laughs> yes. Which is good and terrible in its own way. Yeah. Um, I definitely grown from that um, a lot, but I mean, being poor, you gotta have resilience yeah you do like i've had nothing about my account i've lived out my car i've yep. done a bunch of crazy shit <laughs> and i've had a lot of things happen in my life right but i think what really got me through it all was a few things number one i trusted in myself to be able to navigate those situations mm-hmm. whether i knew how to or not i trusted that As a person, I just had the base set of skills to of being able to learn and do what I needed to do, right? And trust myself to navigate, not having a house and having you know the ability to connect with people and gather friends and you know people who wanted to support me in in their way. Totally. Um, Secondary to that, I think self reflection is a a big piece. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My ability to. Remove yourself from the equation and look at the bigger picture. Right. You kind of view it from a top-down perspective of, okay, now that everything's said and done, what happened? Like, what were the what caused something? How do we deal with it? And what was the outcome? Mm-hmm. Kind of think of it like a re- project management reference perspective in sure. some way. Sure, yeah, yeah. And it's like, how do we get ourselves in this situation? What decisions did we make that put ourselves in this place? And how can we grow from it and potentially never do it that again? Right. Yeah. If it was negative, that is. If it was for negative, sure. right. Yeah, that. Yeah. And then I suppose if positive, how can we repeat that in future projects? But yeah, yeah. So circling back, we sort of touched on this earlier in a way. But looking back, 
Was there a pivotal moment that changed the direction of your life? Let's let's get into that more in depth, shall we? If I if I think back onto truly pivotal moments that fundamentally my life would be completely different. It was when I was 17 and could have stayed in England or done what I did and had the opportunity to go to Hawaii. Yeah. I'd be a fundamentally different human being. That's huge. Who knows if we would have ever met? Highly unlikely. Yeah, exactly. But you never know. The Anjuna sphere brings things. Yes. (laughs) I was going to say, I hope that like technology gets to a weird point where like we could view that choice being made just to see if we ever did meet. Yeah. (laughs) Like on a screen. Anyways. (laughs) But yeah, what was it about Hawaii specifically that changed you for the better and how do you think it would have been different if you stayed in england i don't know if it was hawaii specifically i think it was just getting out of england got it however hawaii taught me a lot about slowing down Mm. western culture is you know go 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 right and hawaii's like no bro chill (laughs) which there's something to be said about i'll see you at two o'clock yeah that means four yeah (laughs) so fundamentally it it taught me a lot about patience patience with others Mm -hmm. patience with other cultures and how they operate yeah and just because you operate one way doesn't mean they need to operate another way yeah totally so you either adapt embrace or leave yeah or go somewhere else yeah so i I learned a lot about patience because i definitely wasn't a patient person when i was younger yeah and i still struggle with that sometimes too but i mean remember in our walk today we sat on a bench Mm -hmm. and i was like man it's so nice to just sit here and like be without any like we have to get to the next thing we have to get to the next thing like today being reserved to just hang out with you was so needed (laughs) in my life you know based on that whole like go with the flow slowing down yeah exactly slowing down specifically yes yes slowing down but also being present with who you're with Mm -hmm. um yeah absolutely um Uh, Because, you know, obviously we live in a day and age where everyone's just on their phone all the time. And Mm -hmm. what about you? What what was the the moment of truth? Yeah, for me. Well, as you said earlier, there have been several in your life. But uh, I would say for me, probably when um, my brother handed me that In Search of Sunrise CD as a kid Mm. when I was 16, I was like, wow, this is the most beautiful music I've ever heard. And it just keeps going. (laughs) (laughs) My hands keep going further into the air. Yeah, (laughs) right. Well, and like, here's the thing. I had heard electronic music before, you know. I remember we had this friend named Richard who would come over to our house every Saturday and we would play Nerf Gun Wars in our basement with the lights off. And he would blast this CD that had all these weird trance and like hardcore and just like, you know how quote unquote everything was techno back then? Yes. Yeah, but there was a lot of video game remixes on that album, too, which is hilarious because, like, I've been listening to them for so long, right? It was probably just shit he got off of, like, Kaza or LimeWire, right? But, like, yeah, the the days, man. Uh, (laughs) And we're showing our age, yeah. Yeah, right. But honestly, like, that moment where Rob handed me that CD and was like, hey, you should listen to this. I was like blown away by that like i had never been by any other electronic music i was like wow it can get this pretty like that's amazing you know and uh is louise snoring <laughs> she's having some doggy dreams right now i see yeah, yeah. deep and shaken yeah deep in the sleep yeah again i'm sorry i apologize that i have a dog and i have nowhere to put her in my house that's just the way no it apologies. is yeah <laughs> but dogs are the best so it's fine um yeah but okay so going back that moment catalyzed pretty much every choice that i made thereafter because i made the decision to become a producer and a dj and that has opened so many doors in my life and given me so many opportunities and helped me to meet so many amazing people and i think that's the most important part right is the people i've met now the the experiences i've had are really cool too obviously don't get me wrong you know being able to dj in other countries and uh, meet all of these people that have been my childhood heroes has been really, really cool. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. It's the relationships that I've fostered and made with people at the end of the day that, um, that are still going strong today. There's nothing like it. Um, and that's what it really is all about at the end of the day for me is the people because yeah, the music's great. 
The music's amazing for our mental health and our state of mind and for our well-being. But the people that we meet along the way, right? Like you, for instance. I'd be a very different person if it wasn't for you. Likewise. Like, holy crap, I would be so different if it wasn't for you. And the funniest part is the first time, like, the first time I ever spoke to you, bro, I heard your accent and I was like, oh, you're from England? I bet you don't even know who Above and Beyond are because I had had so many people tell me recently who had British accents that they had no idea who they were and what trance music was. And you were like, yeah, of course I know. And I love Gabriel and Dresden. And I was like, what? <laughs> But think about it. If I had never become a DJ Mm -hmm. and I had never, uh, you know, made that decision and fallen into these like sort of music communities that I had fallen into, literally, I never would have said that to you. You would have just been another chef that, you know, I'd had hundreds of in my 11 years of working in restaurants. Right. You you would have been cool because you were British and you had suave. But like we never would have like gone to Chicago together and we never uh-huh. would have, you know, gone to the gorge together and yep. had those amazing moments of just us. I never would have visited your childhood home in London. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know. Uh, had you doses never would have been my, my what had doses with my mom. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and crumpets for the first time. Oh, good oh, Lord. So, so good. So yeah. But, but honestly, like that never would have all happened. And it was, Honestly, because I like when you scale it all back, it's because I heard that Tiesto album and decided to become a DJ. Crazy. And then we forgot our earplugs going to Ministry Sounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Idiots. No, and I remember Gareth Emery played that night. Oh, that's right, guys. Yeah, and he played, uh, he played, what's that song? Not Inside. Um, no, it is Inside by Oliver Smith. I remember that. Clear as day. And he played the uh, the Castle on the Hill remix mm-hmm. by Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Oh, good times. But yeah, that was the loudest club I've ever been in. I'm surprised I don't have like permanent hearing loss from it. <laughs> I thought we were going to, but you know, I just have a picture of some back on the bus. Just like, yeah. <sighs> With as many loud environments as I've been in, like I definitely should have like way worse hearing than I do. Yeah. Anyways, protect your earplugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wear earplugs. Do it. Oh man. Well, okay. So we're going to be switching up our format slightly. And at the end of every episode, we're going to have a question because we want to foster some sense of engagement. We don't want to live in an echo chamber per se, but because this is the first episode, we're just going to let you know about that. And in the following episodes, we are going to have some form of communication that we establish. Um, I think you were talking about like a Google form earlier or an Instagram page that you can DM or leave comments on. We'll definitely keep your info anonymous if we use anything from you on the show. But uh, yeah, for for the time being, uh, just expect that. And yeah, we're really excited to kind of be in this more pro audio format. And it's just so nice again to record in person with you. It's been a long time coming. So if we get a message from Party Boy 44 or Inspirational Light, <laughs> Goddess Moon, yeah. love that for everybody. Yes. Um, and honestly, all perspectives are welcome because seeing the world from different angles is pivotal for us all because there's a lot of ways that I don't see the world due to my upbringing, due to my privilege, due to you know certain factors in my life and you know the things that happened to me. And Nathan sees the world differently for me because of all those things in his life. And you see the world differently from us because of the things in your life. So honestly, like we're opening this discussion to everyone and anyone. I feel like the more we talk amongst ourselves, the more that we can sharpen each other and become better people. So with that said, thank you for being here for the first episode of The Quest Within. We'll see you in a couple months um, because the format is going to be every other month. And then... You can find another mental health video on my YouTube channel in the meantime that is more nerd focused, more video game related. So yeah, feels good to be back, Nate. Love you, brother. Love you too. We'll see you next time on The Quest Within. (laughs) 